All right, so here was another thing that I, I liked that I saw. Something I say a lot, and you, I never see in the in the mainstream media. I saw in the Daily Show. So what happened was uh, their talk. Uh, John Stewart was talking about uh, us meeting with Iran, and he kind of did that two-person talk and mime kind of thing while pretending to be both people. It's like he, it's like the idea that. The U.S. delegate was probably like, oh man, it's 35 years since we talked. I don't even remember what we were mad about. And then the Iranians like, well, in 1953, you installed the Shah, and then the Shah, but good with it. And I thought that was because, I thought it was great. Because that's the framing and that's the context I want to see. I mean, because... I just, I have no idea what all of you guys see in the world. Because, but anyway, because to me, this is a huge pet peeve in the Middle East. People, both sides of the aisle, whatever, they're always like, everybody says, so I can say. Um, you know, it's like, uh, well, they've just been fighting forever over there. Why are they fighting in the middle? What's the problem with them? Why do they hate us? They've just been fighting forever, and they got a religion where they hate freedom. And it's like, or... Instead of just believing the bullshit that you're swimming in, hey, maybe you could just, I don't know, go to Wikipedia even and, and just look up the last hundred years of Iran, Iranian, <clears throat> I'm getting upset, Iranian history, and see if you don't see anything in there they might be upset about. <laughs> just, no, just look with yourself. Don't No teachers, no tutors, just you read it yourself and see if you could think anything in there might pissed them off so I like to see someone actually going well actually I mean it's like this with Iran imagine that let, we're, let's pretend we're Americans and try to imagine going through Iran and we'll see how angry we think we might be so let's imagine back when it was Eisenhower that it wasn't Eisenhower it was evil universe like evil Kirk you know like evil universe Eisenhower and um for the very liberal people, this is an ironic example. But um, the evil universe Eisenhower, and he had been uh, installed. You know, we'd had a little revolution and had uh, Adlai Stevenson for a bit, for a couple months, a day. And then, uh, and then the Chinese came and installed evil universe Eisenhower. Instead of warning us about the military-industrial complex, he uh, he just used the military-industrial complex to exploit America and export all our most valuable goods to China. And then 25 years later, uh, we were we were a little messed up in the head. We, for 25 years, had been going to our churches going, what the fuck? What's God? What God? What's your problem? Come on. We, and then, because of that, tension was happening in our churches, you know. Some young pastors grew older thinking, you know, this, yeah, God wants me to do something about this. Because really, that's just their urge to be free, funneled through their their uh, zealotry, which is a, is a channel for such emotions when the shit hits the fan. And, um, and then, come 19, you know, 79, we elected Pat Robertson president. We'd look like crazy motherfuckers. And someone like me that's an atheist, I'd still be an atheist. And I'd be like, look, not only do I hate China because they installed an evil Ike dictator, alternate universe Ike, because I like Ike. I like our Ike. <laughs> it's easier to do with the new wave of conservatives. That are like, yeah, Ike. Yeah, Ike, that's the kind of conservative I want. Ike. Um... I like our Ike. I, I don't like evil universe Ike. And I'm not going to be happy about that. And then I'm going to be extra pissed that the only uh, social structure able to fight that was religion. And we ended up with fucking President Pat Robertson. And now we look like crazies. And I'd be trying everything I could to make us back be a sane nation and recover from this rape and the post-traumatic stress that it had induced. And that's what the Iranians are doing. Because the Iranians are actually really together people. And you should just fucking wake up and read some history and learn about fucking world culture and where your algebra came from and everything else. And then just fucking face reality. All your fucking demons. 
that's the other funny thing. Like, who's one of the most legitimate, like, evil empires to worry about? North Korea. I'm even worried about them. I am worried about them because of that regime. Is it the Koreans? Is it their thing? Oh, they've been fighting for forever. No, they were split up by us. And the solution to that is when North and South Korea can finally get together. And sadly, it's been so long that North Koreans will probably need extra education and not the kind of communist education of of, of uh, indoctrination, but just regular catching up with the world. And I, I'll bet, you know what, I'll bet they do it in a single generation because the Koreans know how to kick ass. You guys need to face fucking facts in the world and realize the strengths of all the peoples of the earth and why, well, I'll just show you later. I noticed... Uh, a couple things in the news that I thought were good. Sort of silver lining good, but still. I don't know. Good. Whatever. I don't know how good. Let's put it that way. Um, one is I noticed the news is talking more and more, and it's becoming more and more evident the economic nature of the NSA espionage. They, um, you guys really don't understand rhetoric. I mean, you know, the, some of you do, but you know the wool's being pulled over your eyes. You, I'm not really talking to my audience. I mean, you, you Americans in general. They, they know the wool is being pulled over their eyes. They're, I don't know, inherently, you know, cynical. There's a... It's just like an automatic thing. And yet, they just buy excuses, you know. Like the, like the reason, like Google, it, it, somehow this message has got out that Google's switching to us to the Google Plus comments because of spamming and something like that. Well, I mean, I think the Google Plus comment system it just works better than the YouTube one. It has threading and stuff. I hate that notification thing. They should still go in the inbox, but but that doesn't mean those are the reasons. When you, when you do something like that, it's a grand plan. There's a lot of reasons, a huge strategy of why you spent all this effort to replace something that existed. And they choose something they think their audience will, will think is a good reason for it. That's not the reason. That's not why they were thinking. What they're thinking about is uh, taking over the portal. The portal. It's always a battle over the portal in computers. Sometimes it looks like the OS is going to be a portal. Sometimes it's the browser. Then the browser gets standardized. Then it's going to be apps in the browser. It's websites. It's, that's why they did it. They're trying to make a portal system to kill Facebook with. Right, so the other thing I saw uh, that I mention a lot to people, I mean, in this one I've been like, if, if the video is at all relevant, I will volunteer shield for this. And this is thorium energy, uh, liquid core reactor nuclear energy, which you know, it solves the big problems. Um, anyway, the story I saw uh, was the Young Turks, who, you know, I have mixed feelings about those guys. But anyway, they're kind of entertaining. This is a, kind of a headline. I, I don't think I didn't pop up anywhere else until I searched for it. I probably would have heard about it because I'm a look up the thorium stuff, but. Uh, it's some thorium-driven car that'll be able to, that'll go a hundred years on just a couple grams of thorium. So, I have nobody's, I mean, they're still working on making it. They've made a thorium reactor before, and they've made liquid, there's never been one in production, and nobody's ever made one small enough to go in a car, and it's a stupid place to put a reactor. But it's interesting because... You know, it fuels people looking into what thorium is, is really about. Now, the thing with thorium, there's two things. 
uh, that make these uh, lifter liquid fluoride, liquid uh, fluoride thorium reactor safer. Okay, one thing is uh, the thorium, which I'll talk in a second. Thorium instead of uranium. The other thing is uh, that it's a liquid design. The, the uranium plants are they're, they're made with solid fuels that as they burn they crack and get gas molecules, the fission products are stuck in there. <coughs> the uh, rod or pellet or whatever becomes you know, structurally unstable, it's ready to crack and crumble. And uh, that happens with uranium after just 10% of the fuel is burned. And so that race, waste is all that, all those rods that you can't burn anymore. To burn them, you'd have to reprocess them. You'd have to dissolve and remelt basically the rods into pure uranium 234 or whatever, 233, whatever it is. Okay. That's the solid versus liquid part. Now, the other part is that um, thorium won't uh, undergo uh, fission decay on its own. You need to start it off. You need to put some. Uh, you need to put some uranium there to start it off. Because it's just, it's just at the edge of wanting to fizz. So when you get it started, just like, you know, dominoes, it's just, each one that goes up just barely has enough energy to make the ones next to it go off. All right. Because it's liquid, if it does overheat, they're able to, you know, use liquid management systems and, uh, and cool tricks like the liquid is a, a dissolved salt, or I mean the liquid is the thorium and the other products that are produced eventually dissolved into salt. If that gets too hot, you can have a salt plug with a melting temperature well known reliable melting temperature that'll cause that salt plug to melt and the fluids will drain. You won't have a meltdown. With uranium, it's harder to set things up like that because though you could with a liquid core, you could conceivably. But it's a lot harder because uranium, when it breaks up, puts off a lot more energy. So it knocks a lot more neighbors into crazy state and you tend to get a runaway reaction if there's enough uranium close by. And the thorium is not like that. The thorium you knock over, it starts running and it produces a ton of energy. And if you leave it alone, it should keep producing that energy until its fuel is spent. And if something goes wrong, the plug's gonna drain and it's gonna drop out. And these, the designs they're working on, the Chinese are working on one, there's been research in this, that you know, the, we built a thorium reactor, but it was solid core, but liquid reactors. The people that are working with them, these liquid core designs, uh, you know, we're talking about something that'll fit on the bed of a 18 wheeler and you know, put out enough power for 100,000 homes. On a fuel that's almost free, the cost of the fuel is building the reactor. The fuel, I mean, the thorium situation is ridiculous. First of all, there's four times more of it than uranium. Secondly, it's all radioactive and one isotope ready to go, whereas uranium, the Earth's so old, 
96% of the uranium has already decayed and is no longer radioactive. So when they mine uranium, they have to mix out the radioactive uranium from the other uranium. And that's actually a bitch. Because they're both uranium. So most tricks like putting something in there that'll bond to the uranium and then, you know, getting it to drag out. They're gonna shit, it doesn't work. That's why they have those centrifuges. Those atoms are a little bit heavy. So if you spin them and give them enough time, they'll sediment. They'll, they'll do like a sediment now. The heavy things will wiggle their way through the sludge towards the bottom. It's not a very efficient process. Meanwhile, where to get thorium, well, they already produce thorium when they're getting the rare earth minerals for our iPhones uh, from the sand deposits there in China. Thorium's a byproduct. If you've ever heard about the big waste pools of radioactive waste pools they have around the mines that are digging or were digging the rare earth materials for our phones and whatnot, those pools are radioactive because of thorium. Thorium's in all the dirt around us. If you're aware of the fact that just your average rock and everything has a little bit of radiation, <clears throat> Well, in most cases, it's, it's a lot of cases, it's thorium. You know, these rare earth minerals are not rare as in they're rare to find them. They're rare in that they're spread out. They don't make veins. They're just in the dirt. But they're everywhere. Furthermore, we have enough thorium left over from the Manhattan Project, I believe it was, to power the whole United States for a thousand years. Huh. Yeah, the fuel is, is, is cheap and basically free. I mean, we already have it. it it's waste. On top of that, thorium, a liquid thorium reactor, you could burn that so-called radioactive waste in the reactor as fuel. There's still 90% of the power in there in a thorium design. You could make dissolve some of that stuff in there and use it as fuel. You could actually burn up our old nuclear waste. Now, it still is nuclear power, but you only need like a golf ball size worth of this stuff to power you for your whole life. And when you're done, 99% of that material is gone into energy. Uranium, it's the other way around. 10% of it is done. 90% of the energy is still there. Now you got something that's radioactive for 20, 30,000 years. Right? Thorium being a lighter material doesn't tend to make transuranics as much, meaning the big plutonium and weapon grade, you know, radioactive heavy metals. Instead, they break down into things like barium and cesium that have 10, 20 year half lives. Uh, waste, it, it, so, so a lot of the waste is useful medical isotopes. But if, as far as the waste that, oh, we just have to store it somewhere. It has a storage requirement of only 300 years instead of with plutonium, which is like 20,000. And we can burn up all of that plutonium. I mean, we basically don't need any more fuel. We have tens of thousands of years of fuel if we use nuclear energy. If, if people are using electric cars, include the cars in that. The cost is entirely in how much we can build these reactors. And what they need to deal with now is the fact that they've got corrosive salts with uh, radioactive decay products in it coursing through a system you know how often what what alloy is going to last the longest and require the least amount of switching out and stuff so an interesting statistics i was watching an interview on thorium with a retired scientist from cern and he uh he had an interesting point, which is that a lot of the green people don't like uh, they don't like nuclear energy just in principle um, because you know the fr framing and what everybody thinks about it. But he was pointing out, you know, yeah, there's radioactivity everywhere, and as a matter of fact, coal ash is radioactive. And he said he had a, he had a colleague do some calculations that proved that 
if you were to burn the radioactive thorium and uranium that's in coal ash, in a thorium, well, he doesn't want to do a liquid thorium reactor. He has an idea of something even safer that uses a pulsed beam to supply the neutrons. You know, so it's, it's, it's much, much more safe. I could talk about the dangers of thorium. I mean, any plant has its dangers, right? Okay, so certainly it's nuclear energy and there's some dangers. It's just not a danger of the meltdown. Fukushimas don't happen with thorium. The Fukushima site might be a mess to clean up, but it'd be contained there because there wouldn't be a meltdown. Okay, but anyway, um, if you took the thorium out of the coal ash and burn it in a, in a thorium reactor of some sort, you would actually get more energy out of the ash than you got out of the coal that produced the ash. And in the end, you have less radioactive results. So even though coal is not nuclear power, it does burn stuff that has thorium and uranium in it that ends up in the ash that is radioactive and poisonous in many other ways. So really we're facing the fact that as ironic as it is, but we're stupid, so we should have realized that we had the ass backwards. That we should jump at the chance to realize, oh, that's what was ass backwards. I knew something was. We just assume nuclear energy is the dirtiest. No, nuclear energy is the real way energy works. It's the real energy source of the universe um, for macroscopic things like, like us, for systems like, like Earth. And it is the cleanest form of energy. And I would not be surprised if, it, if you analyze it, if it's cleaner than solar cells because of the dirty-ass way solar cells have to be produced. But don't get me wrong, I'm for solar cells as well. I, I long ago... Clean technology is where you clean up after yourself, right? That's true of moving manure or anything. So clean technology is when you clean up after yourself. If you have a technology where you can't, say you're belching ash and, and carbon monoxide into the atmosphere in a non-recollectable way, then okay, that's probably not going to be clean. You can still clean it up a little bit with carburetors and scrubbers and stuff. But anyway.